Hello and welcome to Tips with Tony. I'm Tony Marinucci and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist with a passion for helping people live a healthier lifestyle through both diet and exercise. Over the years I have helped thousands of people do that in many many different ways and so today I wanted to talk about just how I've done that. All of these episodes are going to be fun, educational, inspiring, and motivating. We're going to have the opportunity to go through different types of diets, different types of lifestyles, and interview other healthcare professionals and even fitness professionals. Today, we're going to define the difference between a diet, a fad diet, and a lifestyle change. The term diet over the years has gotten a really, really bad rap. And when we think of the term diet, we think of the we think of restriction. And restriction is something that only leads to actually overindulging later, which actually reverses the ultimate goal, which was living a healthy lifestyle in general. So I really want to make the a clear definition between a fad diet and a lifestyle change. When you're going to work and you're looking at the billboards around you, you're traveling, and maybe you're looking in, at watching television, listening to the radio, you're going to hear a bunch of different diets that claim to be the best diet out there. However, my question to you is if they keep coming out with diets, they clearly haven't found one that worked. So today we're going to define how we can commit to a healthy lifestyle and truly get healthy one bite at a time. Before the show, I had fans and friends and family submit questions to me that they were wondering about the specific diet that they're thinking about starting. Today I'm going to answer those questions for you. If you have any questions yourself, feel free to email me or follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and ask questions any time of the day, anytime you want and I will definitely address them on the next show. So we're going to get started. First question is I only eat one meal a day and I'm still not losing weight, I don't understand. This is very, very common. A lot of people might go the entire day without eating and then dinner tends to be their heaviest meal. Or maybe they only have lunch but they skip dinner, they skip breakfast, whatever it is, if you're only having one meal a day, your metabolism is significantly slowing down. It's very challenging to actually lose weight eating one meal a day. The best way is to have small frequent meals, snacks in between, so that way your portion sizes are controlled, you choose more nutritionally well balanced foods. If you're not eating all day, you're probably, and you're only having one meal, you're going to crave those things that are high in salt and fat and sugar. So it's really important to try to incorporate at least three meals a day and snacks in between. Question number two. I know eating late at night is bad and I made my cutoff time 6 p.m., but I work until 7 and by the time I get home I'm starving. So this is a really big common misconception that eating late at night is bad for us. It's not necessarily bad for us, it's just that food provides calories which provides fuel. And if you're going to go to sleep pretty soon, then you don't really need to eat a lot of calories at one time. So to make a cutoff time something at 6 p.m., especially if you're working till 7, 8 o'clock at night, then you're actually skipping dinner, which is a big no-no, as many dietitians will tell you. So May only make really a cutoff cut cutoff time really isn't necessary, but genuinely ask yourself, are you hungry? Am I hungry? If the answer is yes, then have something. But if you're going to bed in about two hours, then make that portion small, maybe a glass of milk, a piece of fruit, um, something with a minimal amount of calories because you really don't need that energy to, to go to sleep. Number three, what diet can I go on to lose my belly fat? I wish I knew. Um, unfortunately, we can't actually lose weight in the places we want to. When our body loses weight, we lose weight from a bunch of different areas. It can be our face, it can be our hands, our feet. I know people that have actually lost ring sizes and had to get a new wedding band because they're 
think their rings no longer fit their fingers. So it's great that they're losing weight, but unfortunately it doesn't always come from the area that we want it to. However, a commitment to a diet um, and a healthy lifestyle and exercise plan can help to eventually it'll come from the areas that you want. But if there was such a thing as spot training, trust me, the diet industry would get after it. I would diet, but I love carbs too much. Every time I give them up, I can do it for a few days, maybe even a week, but then I can't get past that and I tend to overeat them. This is very, very common. Carbs have gotten a really bad rap over the years and a lot of people think that if they eat carbs it's not healthy for them and they if they're eating carbs and they're therefore unhealthy and that's not true at all you have to choose the right types of carbohydrates carbs that are in their natural source so something like fruit naturally has sugar in it but there's no added sugar to it so in that type of carbohydrate is a healthy type of carbohydrate Whole grains are important as well, so things like oatmeal and quinoa and brown rice, those are the grains, the carbohydrates that you should be fueling your body with. So it's not that carbs are bad and you need to eliminate them, you just have to choose the right types of carbohydrates. I have high blood pressure and my doctor told me he wants me to take medication, but I really don't want to. What can I do instead? Right, so high blood pressure is a medical diagnosis that can come from a few different areas. Hereditarily, your family might just have high blood pressure, so therefore you have high blood pressure, but there are other things in your lifestyle that you can do to control them. If you're a smoker, definitely quit smoking, and that can help lower your blood pressure significantly. If you're not an exercise person, start exercising, and that can lower your blood pressure as well. When it comes to food, instead of medication, you want to have foods that are high in potassium. So eating foods that, like bananas, avocados, tomatoes, those foods will naturally lower your blood pressure. And then the obvious answer is get rid of that salt shaker, remove a lot of the processed foods that carry a lot of sodium in the diet. Try cooking with fresh herbs and spices to increase the nutrition and flavor of the dishes without actually raising your blood pressure. All right, our last question, but don't forget you can always submit questions to me and I'll answer them on the next show. This is our last question of the day. I've heard bananas are fattening and fruit has a lot of sugar, so I stopped eating them, but what do I eat instead? I hear bananas are fattening too, and it always boggles my mind because bananas are just like any other fruit and they don't contain any fat at all. Fruit is straight carbohydrates. Like I was talking about before, it's a natural source of carbohydrate. There's no added sugar, there's no added fat, there's no added protein, it's just strictly carbohydrates. So fruit is a definitely a healthy option to have in the diet and to restrict and not have fruit in the diet is, um, I mean you can do it but I don't see, really see why you would. Fruit contains a lot of antioxidants, it's really high in water and fiber so you feel full when you have it, and fruit can be a very satisfying food to have to get you to get from one meal to the other in a nutritious way. We talked about the diets that don't work, so let's talk about ways you can commit to that healthy lifestyle in a healthy way by changing your foods that you eat on a daily basis with healthy quick swaps. I'm going to give you five different tips of what you can do to live a healthier lifestyle that's easier for you to commit to that. Tip number one, add more fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are loaded with antioxidants, fiber, and water. Because of their high water content, they tend to be less calories. So for example, if you're used to snacking on, let's say, potato chips in the middle of the day. This serving of potato chips is a little bit over 200 calories. It also has a lot of added fat and salt. And then you have, this is a bowl of carrots that is not even near 100 calories. So you can significantly change the caloric intake by just making a healthy swap from potato chips to carrots. Something like a carrot, when you chomp on it, it takes a long time to chew. It's not going to be something that you can kind of just eat, eat, and eat. You have to be polite and chew with your mouth closed. It takes a while to eat it. Very similar, same thing with an apple. If you chomp on it, it takes time to eat. So therefore, you're going to eat something. This apple is a small apple. It's under 60 calories. Under 60 calories versus 200 calories 
of something that has added salt and fat is a really, really big difference. So most days, if you're used to having something like potato chips, then swap to something like carrots or an apple. Another way to incorporate more vegetables in your dish is making half of your plate vegetables. Many people tend to make the meat the main focus of the dish. If you make vegetables the main focus of the dish, then you're guaranteed to eat more of them. If you're really struggling on how to incorporate the fruits and vegetables in your snacks, then maybe have a meatless meal and substitute your protein for something like beans. Beans are an excellent source of fiber, antioxidants, and the heart healthy fats that are really good for us. So you get the protein, but you don't get a lot of the extra fat and cholesterol that sometimes is in those meat products. Once again, meat is not bad, but if you're just having problems finding ways to get fruits and vegetables into your diet, having a meatless meal is a really good option. Tip number two, make half of your grains whole grain. What that means is if for breakfast you usually have something like white toast or a bagel, then the remainder of your day when you're having some type of carbohydrate, you want to make sure there's some fiber in that. The fiber is what pulls cholesterol out of the blood, regulates blood sugars, that's the nutrition component of those grains. And grains in their whole form will contain that fiber naturally. So for example, instead of maybe having white toast for breakfast, have something like oatmeal. Oatmeal naturally contains fiber that's going to give you the nutrition that you need. Tip number three, choose lean proteins. The whiter the meat, the less fat that it carries. So the breasts of the chicken, the white fishes, white fillets, they tend to have less fat and the skin is really what carries the fat. So if you do skinless proteins and you use cooking methods like baking, grilling, instead of frying, you're going to get the protein that your body needs without the added fat and calories that your body doesn't necessarily need. Tip number four. Limit processed foods that have added salt, sugar, and fat. These foods can be very addicting and they tend to carry a lot of food, a lot of ingredients that our body doesn't need. So for example, if you're used to drinking something like fruit juice, fruit juice contains a lot of sugar, which what we call as empty calories. This doesn't really provide any other type of nutrition for your body other than kind of putting you on a really big sugar high and you'll have a lot of energy, but then you'll just crash later. Also, if you have something like a diagnosis like diabetes and you're trying to regulate your blood sugars, all this will do is spike it and bring it right back down, which is very, very dangerous. So instead of fruit juice, you want to do something like water. If you're getting tired of water, having something like flavored seltzer or putting frozen fruit in your water is a nice way to stay hydrated and get something that's a little bit if you're getting a little bored of the water. But water is definitely something that has no calories, no sugar, no salt, it's just a purpose is just to hydrate and keep us full and satisfied. Okay. Um, if you're going to choose foods, a lot of foods that are processed have a real high amounts of sodium. So the best way, actually, we talked about before, is like someone who has high blood pressure, a good way to decrease their blood pressure and eliminate a lot of the excess salt in the diet is by incorporating foods that are high in potassium. If you heard me say before, the foods high in potassium are our natural foods. Some things like fresh fruits and vegetables will contain potassium to lower them. Also, getting rid of that salt shaker and using things like this is garlic powder. There's other types of spices like onion powder if you want something spicy like red chili peppers, uh, regular pepper, ground black pepper, all of those spices and even using herbs like cilantro um, or sage in your cooking is definitely a way to improve the nutrition quality and flavor of your dishes without raising the sodium. So limiting extra sugar, extra salt, and then lastly, extra fat. So going back to how you would cook your proteins, choosing lean proteins and baking, grilling, or broiling rather than adding a whole lot of butter or oil in your cooking method is a way to eliminate the extra fat in the diet. Okay, number five. Number five actually has nothing to do with food. It's all about exercise and starting an exercise regimen that actually works for you. If you've never exercised a day in your life, 
Don't expect to be able to run the New York City Marathon tomorrow, let alone be able to run two miles tomorrow. If you've never ran before, it's going to be a challenge for you. So set up goals that are realistic for you. If you're a little intimidated of going into the gym, maybe join a class like Pilates or Zumba so it's a safe space and you have an instructor that's there to guide you through those movements. Another thing I'll say about setting up your exercise regimen and exercise goals, instead of just saying, oh, I'm going to go to the gym this week, actually put it in your calendar. Make a date with yourself. I'm going to go to a Pilates class at 6.30 right when I get out of work. Pack your gym bag and make sure that you're ready to go and that way after work you just head straight there. You're much more likely to actually follow through with your goals when you write it down Set it, say it out loud and set those goals ahead of time. Today we learned the difference between a fad diet and a lifestyle change. Hopefully I motivated you to make a healthy swap in either your diet or your exercise regimen. Here are the five things that you can do to help you commit to a healthy lifestyle. One, add more fruits and vegetables. Two, make half of your grains whole grain. Three, choose lean proteins. Four, Limit added salt, sugar, and fat. And five, start an exercise regimen that works and sticks with you. For a printout of information discussed today, questions, comments, or suggestions, email me at tipswithtony at yahoo.com, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or subscribe to my YouTube page. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I helped you get healthy one bite at a time.